G'day, I'm Chris Muir. I'm an ADF Product Manager at Oracle Corporation. Now in today's ADF Architecture TV episode, what we're going to be discussing is how you define the architecture of your ADF application. So imagine you're starting out for your first ADF project and at some point you need to sit down and design the architecture of your ADF application. What are all the moving parts? So what we'd like to discuss very quickly in this episode is what are those moving parts? And it's really defined by this one statement. The architecture of an ADF application is defined by its reusable components and its supporting structures. Now, if you were building an application by coding it purely in a 3GL language, this would be an entirely different discussion because it's up to you to go and define all the objects, all the different integration points, and so on and so forth. But when building a solution using a framework such as Oracle's Application Development Framework, frameworks typically promote their own abstract constructs and how to reuse these. So very much it's these that drive the architecture of the application that you are writing. So let's then address what are the reusable artifacts in ADF. Now here we have the typical MVC diagram, that is the model view controller diagram that Oracle likes to show to give an idea of the different technologies that fit into the overall ADF solution stack. Looking at this diagram, there are just too many technologies to cover to answer our question on what are the reusable ADF artifacts. So let's narrow the scope of technologies down to a typical set of technologies used by customers. That is, ADF business components for interfacing with the database. This is typically coupled with the binding layer to make up the model part of ADF's MVC architecture. Then the ADF controller coupled with the JSF controller for defining page flows through task flows. And finally, ADF faces, which represents our pages and page fragments as called from our task flows. Given that we have now have this subset of ADF technologies, let's answer technology by technology what reusable artifacts they help define. So when we specifically talk about ADF business components, what are the reusable artifacts within that technology? Now the business components are responsible for talking to the database and it defines a number of constructs to do this. The entity object, the view object, the application module, okay, EOs, BOs and AMs. Now each one of these is in a sense a reusable artifact that you hope to define once and reuse through parts of your ADF business component uh, side of the application. The entity object, yes, is responsible for talking to the database and doing insert updates and deletes. But inside the entity object, which is the basis of many view objects that query the database, you will centralize your business intelligence or your validation logic such that different uh, queries and different interfaces of your view layer, when talking to the database through the EOs, the business logic is defined once rather in multiple different parts of your application logic. Okay, so this is very, very important part for centralizing or reusing business logic throughout your ADF application. Second, the view object. The view object is responsible for the queries that hit the database and goes through the EOs or the entity objects to make use of their insert, update and delete logic. But the queries in turn are a reusable construct because you may have different screens that may use the same view object to represent, say, employees or departments information from the database. Finally, the application module is a construct that exposes the view objects to the view layer to use. So it's kind of like the portal that says what view objects you are going to use. But in addition, it can define methods or Java methods in the underlying Java code that are exposed to the view layer to be made use of too or reused. So for instance, you might uh, define a uh, method to do batch operations on your entity objects, on your view objects. And you might want that batch operation to be exposed as buttons at different parts of the view layer of your application. So again, a very strong and reusable part of uh, your ADF business component architecture as such. The fourth part that's really worth talking about, and it's one that Oracle recommends as a best practice, is the concept of our framework extension classes. Now when defining your ADF business components, we recommend that you also define the framework extension classes. So typically the EOs, the VOs and AMs have a subset of oracle.jbo.server classes that they make use of and you can customize. Now those classes inherit from our own set of classes as such, but you can define your own framework extension classes in between such that your custom EOs, VOs and AMs use the framework extension classes and then the Oracle set of Oracle JBO server classes. 
Now why would you want to do that? Well, one of the first reasons is to override the default methods and functionality that our ADF business components provides. But in addition, this is a really good location that you can define common methods or Java code that can be reused amongst all your ADF EOs, VOs, and AMs. So very quickly, you get a very powerful reusable framework set of extensions that you can use in one application or maybe even multiple applications that need this extensive functionality that you've coded yourself. There is another important construct, reusable construct, that's becoming more important with the latest releases of JDeveloper, and it is in the ADF Business Component space. That is the ADF Business Component Service Data Objects, or SDOs. What an SDO is, is the ability to deliver an ADF Business Component query or application module and its methods to well, the outside world as a SOAP-based web service. So while you can certainly make use of these within your ADF application, you can call web services, you'd more likely call the ADF business components directly. But later on, if you want other applications to make use of your ADF business components, and let's say all the business logic and the query logic and all the code underneath, how you could provision that is by publishing ADF business component SDOs. As example, this will be one way that you can integrate ADF mobile applications into your existing enterprise ADF business components application. So SDO is very much an important part of your ADF architecture, but maybe not the application as a whole, but more of as an as a integration piece and an important reusable piece to make sure that you can make the best use of all that code that you've already written for your existing ADF applications. The next technology layer to consider is the ADF controller layer. And the two technologies within this that we need to consider for ADF reuse and the ADF architecture are the bounded task flows and task flow templates. Now bounded task flows or BTFs in my opinion are the most important, the most pivotal part to your whole ADF architecture. When you're designing and working out how your application is going to be put together, it is the bounded task flows that I personally believe should be the central part of your whole design. Now, what is a bounded task flow? Well, basically within a web application, you typically have page flows where the user will navigate from one page to the next. Now, on a typical website, you might be just bringing some documents or web pages together. But in context of a business application, and you remember Oracles are very much interested in writing business applications, what a banner task load allows you to do is to break your web pages up into, well, perceived processes or perceived screens that represent a process. So my common example I love using is when you think of a university, a university that enrolls students. Now, if they're going to do that all online, they're going to have bounded task flows, as example, to enroll the student to get their details. So enter your name on one screen, then your address, then maybe your billing address. But then on the next set of screens, which you know could be attached to that original set of screens or could be called year on year out when students are re-enrolling, is that you have a set of screens or banner task flow for enrolling the students in particular units. You might have screens for searching for units, then picking units, then working out the types of scores that you need to ensure that you're gonna meet all the um, recorded scores and the recorded metrics for actually completing the course. So if you imagine these bounded task flows as subsets of screens of your application, and you can make use of these in your application by calling them by a menu system, or even getting the bounded task flows to call bounded task flows, you have a very exciting and powerful, I guess, design metaphor within the context of ADF. And just to highlight how important this task flow concept is, in the JSF, the Java Server Faces specification 2.2, they've just recently introduced what they call faces flows, which is very heavily uh, influenced, I should say, by the concept of ADF task flows. So in defining the architecture of your application, it is very much down to defining all the bounded task flows that your application is going to use, and these will comprise the overall flow and how the application comes together. In addition, within the controller layer though, it's not just about bounded task flows, we also have the concept of task flow templates. And these are a reusable construct because if you imagine with your BTFs, your bounded task flows, that in them you may have some common functionality that you need again and again and again in all the bounded task flows. So maybe an exception handler, maybe a logout set of flows. 
And rather than finding those in all the different banner task layers and going, oh no, we forgot to add something and having to go back and add them all again, what you can do is define those features in a task flow template and then just make the banner task flow inherit from them, such that if you want to change the behavior, you just change your task flow template and the banner task flows get all that behavior in one easy step. So let's consider the last layer, the view layer or the ADF faces technology layer within the ADF architecture of the applications that we're defining. Now there's really four reusable technologies within the faces layer. That is page templates, skins, declarative components and your own utility classes. Now what's particularly interesting about a couple of these page templates, skins and declarative components while these are constructs that are certainly reusable within one ADF application, they actually can be reusable across multiple applications if you think about it. For instance, a page template lends itself really well to a corporate layout, logos, fonts, the overall Chrome of your application that you may use again and again and again in different ADF applications. Same with the skins, the colors and the fonts, and the declarative components, well, your toolbars, a declarative component toolbar, for example, might be something that you might use across applications. So defining these is something that you need to do for your application, but once you've got them up and set and running, you can certainly just define them once and reuse them everywhere. And the usual benefits of reuse come into place, rather than, as example, having to go to each page and change the corporate logo at the top left, you can just go to the page template, change it there once, rebuild your applications, and they have that change instantaneously. The one or the part there that probably requires a little bit of explanation is I mentioned utility classes. Now just like in ADF business components how you've got framework extensions where you, the framework extension classes where you may put your own generic methods in there, within the view and also the controller layers you're likely to define your own utility classes, your methods, very much like the standard ADF utils and JFS, JSF utils that floats around as a set of classes for making working with the view layer and the controller layers easier. So again, the utility classes is something that you will probably build once, maybe keep on adding methods to, but will become a central part of your view and controller layer technologies. So at this stage, we've considered the reusable artifacts within the different technologies of ADF's ADF business components, the ADF controller layer and the ADF faces or the view layer as such. But there is one other important area of ADF applications that also defines the architecture and the overall structure of your applications. And it also very importantly defines what is reusable. So we already know all ADF components must exist in a JDeveloper project within a workspace. And we already know workspaces contain one or more ADF projects. Therefore, for components to be shared amongst JDeveloper projects, we have two options. Either within a JDeveloper workspace, we define inter-project dependencies. Or for external reuse, we deploy our reusable artifacts using ADF library jars consumed by another workspace's projects. Therefore, workspaces, projects, and ADF library jars are a key player in an ADF application's architecture. So in conclusion, it is the ADF business components, the ADF control objects such as the bounded task flows, and the ADF faces objects such as page template skins and declarative components, as well as your own extensions and utility and Java classes that define the architecture of your ADF system. So in returning to the question at the beginning of the episode, how to define the architecture of an ADF application, as we've investigated in this episode of the ADF Architecture TV channel, is it's all defined by the reusable components of the layers of the ADF stack, that is ADF business components, the controller layer, and ADF faces. So if your task as a team leader or architect is to define the architecture of your ADF application, really you should be thinking in terms of those reusable components that ADF promotes. Hopefully with this episode today, we've given you another little taster of what this TV channel is all about, the design, architecture and development of ADF applications. And with this link that's currently on the screen, please take the opportunity to sign up and join us for more episodes of the ADF Architecture TV channel in the near future.